Christy with Fremont Park Conservancy and today is super exciting because we are reading our second chapter book. We are going to be reading the first five chapters of Magic Treehouse number two, The Night at Dawn by Mary Pope Osborne. So let's get this adventure started. Chapter one, The Dark Woods. Jack couldn't sleep. He put his glasses on. He looked at the clock. It was 5.30, too early to get up. Yesterday, so many strange things had happened, and now he was trying to figure them out. He turned on the light. He picked up his notebook. He looked at the list he'd made before going to bed. Found treehouse in woods. Found lots of books in it. Pointed to a petrodon picture in the book. Made a wish. Went to the time of dinosaurs. Pointed to a picture of Frog Creek in the woods. Made a wish. Came home to Frog Creek. Jack pushed his glasses into place. Who was going to believe any of this? His mom wouldn't believe it. Neither would his dad or his third grade teacher, Miss Watkins. Only his seven-year-old sister, Annie, understood. She'd gone with him to the time of the dinosaurs. Can't you sleep? Annie was standing in his doorway. Nope, said Jack. Me neither, said Annie. What are you doing? She walked over to Jack and looked at his notebook. She read the list. Aren't you going to write about the gold medal? She asked. You mean the gold medallion, said Jack. He picked up his pencil and wrote, found this in dinosaur time. Aren't you going to put the letter M on the medal, said Annie. Medallion, said Jack, not medal. He added an M. Aren't you going to write about the magic person, said Annie. We don't know for sure if there is a magic person, said Jack. Well, someone built the tree house in the woods and someone put the books in it. Someone lost a gold medal in dinosaur time said Annie. Medallion, said Jack for the third time, and I'm just writing the facts, stuff we know for sure. Let's go back to the treehouse right now, said Annie, and find out if the magic person is a fact. Are you nuts, said Jack? The sun's not even up yet. Come on, said Annie. Maybe we can catch them sleeping. I don't think we should go there, said Jack. He was worried. What if the magic person was mean? What if he or she didn't want kids to know about the treehouse? Well, I'm going, said Annie. Jack looked out his window at the dark gray sky. It was almost dawn. He sighed. Okay, go get dressed. I'll meet you at the back door. Be quiet. Yay, whispered Annie. She tiptoed away as quietly as a mouse. Jack put on jeans, a warm sweatshirt, and sneakers. He tossed his notebook and pencil in his backpack and crept downstairs. Annie was waiting by the back door. She shined a flashlight in Jack's face. Ta-da, a magic wand, she said. Don't wake up mom and dad, whispered Jack, and turn that flashlight off. We don't want anyone to see us. Annie nodded and turned the flashlight off, and then she clipped it onto her belt. Jack and Annie slipped out the door into the cool early morning air. Crickets were chirping. The dog next door barked. Quiet, Henry, whispered Annie. Henry stopped barking. Animals always seem to do what Annie said. Let's run, said Jack. Jack and Annie dashed across the dark wet lawn and didn't stop until they reached the Frog Creek Woods. We need the flashlight now, said Jack. And he took it out, uh, took it off her belt and switched it on. Step by step, she and Jack walked between the, the trees. Jack held his breath. The dark woods were a little scary. Gotcha, said Annie, shining the flashlight in Jack's face. Jack jumped back and then he frowned. Cut it out, he said. I scared you, said Annie. Jack glared at her. Stop pretending, he whispered. This is serious. Okay, okay. Annie shined her flashlight into the tops of the trees. Now what are you doing? Said Jack. I'm looking for the treehouse. The light stopped moving. The mysterious treehouse sat high in the branches of the tallest tree in the woods. Annie shined her light down the long rope ladder. I'm going up, she said. Still holding the flashlight, she began to climb. Wait, Jack called. What if someone was in the treehouse? Annie, come back. But Annie was gone. The light had disappeared. Jack was alone in the dark. Chapter two, leaving again. Annie, Jack shouted. No one's here, she shouted back. Jack thought about going home, and then he thought about all the books in the treehouse. He started up the ladder. When he was almost at the top, he saw a light in the distant sky. Dawn was starting to break. Jack crawled through a hole in the trees, treehouse floor, and took off his backpack. Annie shined her flashlight on the books scattered about the floor. They're still here, she said. Annie shined the light on a dinosaur book. It was the book that had taken them to the time of dinosaurs. Remember the Tyrannosaurus Rex? Asked Annie. 
Jack shuddered. Of course he remembered. How could anyone forget seeing a real live Tyrannosaurus Rex? The light fell on a book about Pennsylvania. A red silk bookmark stuck out of it. Remember the picture of Frog Creek, said Annie. Of course, said Jack. That was the picture that had brought them home. There's my favorite, said Annie. The light was shining on a book about knights and castles. There was a blue leather bookmark in it. Annie turned to the page with the bookmark. There was a picture of a knight on a black horse. He was riding toward a castle. Annie, close that book, said Jack. I know what you're thinking. Annie pointed at the cover. Don't, Annie, said Jack. We wish we could go there, Annie said. No, we don't, shouted Jack. The wind began to moan. The leaves began to tremble. It was happening again. We're leaving, cried Annie, get down. The wind moaned louder, the leaves shook harder. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. The treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster, and then everything was still, absolutely still. Jack opened his eyes. He shivered. The air was damp and cool. The sound of a horse's whinny came from below. Nee! I think we're here, whispered Annie. She was still holding the castle book. Jack peeked out the window. A huge castle loomed out of the fog. Jack looked around. The treehouse was in a different oak tree. Look, said Annie. Down below, a knight on a black horse was riding by. Oh, man, said Jack. That's incredible. But we can't stay here. We have to go home and make a plan first. He picked up the book about Pennsylvania. He opened it to the page with the red silk bookmark. He pointed to the photograph of the Frog Creek Woods. I wish... No, said Annie. She yanked the book away from him. Let's stay. I want to visit the castle. You're nuts. We need to examine the situation, said Jack. From home. Let's examine it here, said Annie. Come on, Annie. Jack held out his hand. Give it. Annie gave Jack the book. Okay, you can go home. I'm staying, she said. She clipped the flashlight to her belt. Wait, said Jack. I'm going to take a peek, a teeny peek she said as she scooted down the ladder. Jack groaned. Okay, Annie won. He couldn't leave without her. Besides, he sort of wanted to take a peek himself. Jack put down the book about Pennsylvania. He dropped the castle book into his pack. He stepped onto the ladder and headed into the cool, misty air. Chapter 3. Across the Bridge Annie was under the tree, looking across the foggy ground. The knight's riding toward that bridge, I think, said Annie. The bridge goes to the castle. Wait, I'll look it up, said Jack. Give me the flashlight. He took the flashlight from Annie and pulled the castle book out of his pack. He opened it to the page with the leather bookmark. He read the words under the picture of the knight. This is a knight arriving for a castle feast. Knights wore armor when they traveled long and dangerous distances. Armor was, a very, was very heavy. A tournament helmet could weigh up to 40 pounds. Wow, Jack had weighed 40 pounds when he was five. It would be like riding a horse with a five-year-old on your head, he thought. Jack pulled out his notebook. He wanted to take notes, as he'd done on the dinosaur trip. He wrote, heavy head. What else? He turned the pages of the castle book. He found a picture that showed the whole castle and the buildings around it. The knight's crossing the bridge, said Annie. He's going through the gate. He's gone. Jack studied the bridge in the picture. He read, a drawbridge crossed the moat. The moat was filled with water to help protect the castle from enemies. Some people believe crocodiles were kept in the moat. Jack wrote in his notebook, crocodiles in moat, question mark? Look, said Annie, peering through the mist. A windmill, right over there. Yeah, there's a windmill here too, said Jack, pointing at the picture. Look at the real one, Jack, said Annie, not the one in the book. A piercing shriek split the air. Yikes, said Annie. It sounded like it came from that little house over there. She pointed through the fog. There's a little house here, said Jack, studying the picture. He turned the page and read. The hawk house was in the inner ward of the castle. Hawks were trained to hunt other birds and small animals. Jack wrote in his notebook, hawks in the hawk house. We must be in the inner ward, said Jack. Listen, whispered Annie. Do you hear that? Drums. Horns, they're coming from the castle. Let's go see. Wait, said Jack. He turned more pages of the book. I want to see what's really going on, Jack. Not what's in the book, said Annie. But look at this, said Jack. He pointed to a picture of a big party. Men were standing by the door playing drums and horns. He read, Feasts were held in the great hall. 
Fanfares were played to announce different dishes in a feast. You can look at the book. I'm going to the real feast, said Annie. Wait, said Jack, studying the picture. It showed boys his age carrying trays of food. On the trays were peacocks with all their feathers, whole pigs, and pies. Peacocks, Jack thought. He wrote, they eat peacocks, question mark. Jack held up the book to show Annie. Look, I think they eat, where was she? Jack looked through the fog. He heard the real drums and the real horns. He saw the real hawk house, the real windmill, the real moat. He saw Annie dashing across the real drawbridge, and then she vanished through the gate leading to the castle. Chapter four, into the castle. Oh, brother, muttered Jack. He threw his stuff into his pack and moved toward the drawbridge. He hoped no one would see him. It was getting darker. When Jack got to the bridge, he started across. The wooden planks creaked under his feet. He peered over the edge of the bridge. Are there any crocodiles in the moat? He wondered. He couldn't tell. Halt! Someone shouted. A guard on top of the castle wall was looking down. Jack dashed across the bridge. He ran through the castle gate and into the courtyard. He heard the sounds of music, shouting, and laughter. Jack hurried to a dark corner and crouched down. He shivered as he looked for Annie. Torches lit the high wall around the courtyard. The courtyard was nearly empty. Two boys led horses that clopped over the gray cobblestones. One of them was the knight's black horse. Psst, Jack. Jack peered into the darkness, and there was Annie. She was hiding behind a well in the center of the courtyard. She waved at him. Jack waved back. He waited until the boys and horses disappeared inside the stable, and then he dashed to the well. I'm going to find the music, whispered Annie. Are you coming? Okay, Jack said with a sigh. They tiptoed together across the cobblestones, and then they slipped through the entrance of the castle. Laughter and music came from a bright room in front of them. They stood at the doorway and peeked in. The feast in the great hall, whispered Jack. He held his breath as he stared in awe. A giant fireplace blazed at one end of the noisy room. Antlers and rugs hung on the stone walls. Flowers covered the floor. People in bright clothes and funny hats strolled among the crowd. Some played oddly shaped guitars. Some juggled balls in the air and some balanced swords on their hands. Boys in short dresses carried huge trays of food. Dogs were fighting over bones under the tables. Men and women dressed in capes and furs sat at long, crowded wooden tables. I wonder which one is the knight, said Jack. I don't know, whispered Annie. But look, they're all eating with their fingers. Halt, someone shouted behind them. Jack whirled around. A man carrying a tray of pies was standing a few feet away. Who art thou? He asked angrily. Jack, squeaked Annie. Jack and Annie, squeaked Annie. Then they ran as fast as they could down a dimly lit hallway. Chapter five, trapped. Come on, cried Annie, hurry. Jack raced behind her. Here, quick. Annie dashed toward a door up off the hallway. She pushed the door open. Jack and Annie stumbled into a dark, cold room. The door creaked shut behind them. Give me the flashlight, said Annie. Jack handed it to her and she switched it on. Yikes, said Annie. A row of knights was right in front of them. Annie flicked off the light, silence. They aren't moving, Jack whispered. Annie switched the lights back on. They're just suits, Jack said. Without heads, said Annie. Let me have the flashlight for a second, said Jack, so I can look in the book. Annie handed Jack the flashlight. He pulled out the castle book. He flipped through the pages until he found what he was looking for. Jack put the book away. It's called the armory, he said. It's where armor and weapons are stored. He shined the flashlight around the room. Oh man, whispered Jack. The light fell on shiny breastplates, leg plates, and arm plates. Shelves were filled with helmets and weapons. Shields, spears, swords, crossbows, clubs, and battle axes hung on the walls. Voices came from the hallway. Let's hide, said Annie. Wait, said Jack, I've got to check on something first. Hurry, said Annie. It'll just take a second, said Jack. Hold this. He handed Annie the flashlight. He tried to lift a helmet from a shelf. It was too heavy. He bent down and dragged the helmet over his head. The visor slammed shut. Oh man, thought Jack, this is worse than having a five-year-old on my head. It's like having a 10-year-old on my head. Not only could Jack not lift his head, he couldn't see anything either. Jack, Annie sounded far away. They're getting closer. Turn off the flashlight, Jack's voice echoed inside the metal helmet. He struggled to get the helmet off. 
and suddenly he lost his balance and went crashing into the other pieces of armor. Metal plates and weapons clattered to the floor. Jack lay on the floor in the dark. He tried to get up, but his head was too heavy. He heard deep voices. Someone grabbed him by the arm. The next thing he knew, his helmet was yanked off. He was staring into the fiery light of a torch. So that concludes the first half of The Night at Dawn. Um, what do we think will happen to Jack and Annie? I wonder if their book tells them anything about how to escape capture. So tune in next week and um, we will find out whenever we read the rest of this book. Thank you for tuning in.